Do you believe that Jesus rose again from the dead? Literally. I find it, I cannot answer that question. It depends on what you mean by Jesus. A historical human being that existed. In a body. And in a body. Back, in a body. And yeah. then it was a physical body and then it was on earth. Yes. That it was on Earth, and that was literally, uh, was literally, um, uh, it came back to life after death. I would say that at the moment I'm agnostic about that issue. Beloved, do not believe every spirit but test the spirits to see whether they're from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, and every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, of which you have heard that is coming, and now it is already in the world. Jordan Peterson does not believe that Jesus of Nazareth was a real historical person who was the Christ, God in the flesh. He does not believe that Jesus Christ died and rose from the dead on the third day. Even when simply asked if he believes in God, he waffles and gives an evasive answer. Because I don't know what the person means by believe or God, and they think they know. Essentially, Jordan Peterson is an agnostic theist, and in no sense of the term a Christian. Despite that, Jordan Peterson intentionally presents himself to the public as a Christian. Now you're a Christian. I suppose the most straightforward answer to that is yes, although I think it's, it's, let's leave it at yes. Not only that, he has taken it upon himself to preach his own brand of theology that he claims will save the world if enough people adhere to it, and he is doing all of this in the name of Jesus Christ. This is a seriously grave transgression. According to the words of the Holy Bible in the New Testament, Jordan Peterson is therefore a false prophet who has the spirit of the Antichrist. He is falsely representing the love and spirit of Christ to further his own political agenda and the propagation of his ideology that he calls radical individualism. We are in danger in the West of abandoning our culture of leaving our great foundational stories to die on the altar of our inquisitiveness, cynicism, and carelessness, of degenerating into nihilism or returning in a reactionary manner to an archaic and destructive tribalism of the right or the left. It matters not. These twin dread paths will not lead us to where we would want to be if we decided to be conscious and careful. Such abandonment will weaken us fatally as individuals. Despite how Peterson says he is agnostic about whether or not he believes Jesus Christ literally rose from the dead, at other times he is quite open and adamant about the fact he believes Christ's death and resurrection are allegorical in nature only. The idea of the dying and resurrecting God is one of the oldest ideas of mankind, widespread and exceptionally variant in its forms. It forms part of the set of presuppositions that underlie the most ancient shamanic rituals, carried over, perhaps, from the Stone Age itself. It is echoed in the foundational stories of ancient Mesopotamia, Egypt, and Greece. It manifests itself in allegorical forms, in the figure of the phoenix, for example, which immolates itself, regains its youthful form, and rises in triumph from the ashes. He has even hinted that he believes in an alchemical interpretation of Jesus Christ's work on the cross. There's an occult interpretation of the little initials at the top here, I-N-R-I, the occult interpretation. I, I can't remember the Latin, but it basically means through fire all nature is renewed. And that's what this means, fundamentally. In Peterson's book, Maps of Meaning, his actual beliefs are laid bare. On page 238, 
The Edenic serpent provides the individual with knowledge of the gods, without their compensatory power and immortality. The Edenic serpent occupies the same categorical space in the Christian psyche as Lucifer, bringer of light. He in fact reveals to us on the same page that he believes that the serpent in the Garden of Eden, Lucifer, is actually an electrical force inside the human nervous system called Kundalini that ascends up the spine, altering consciousness and leading to human enlightenment. He went on to write that the culmination of human enlightenment in an individual as a result of this Kundalini process is the incarnation of a Christ. The incarnation of Christ, the second fruit of the tree of knowledge. So this is what Jordan Peterson actually believes. He believes that Lucifer can transform an individual's body into a Christ. Since human enlightenment culminates in a shift in one's consciousness, ultimately what this means is that Peterson worships his own consciousness as God. When Jordan Peterson talks about Logos, he is actually talking about human consciousness, not about God. At the same point, you're also the embodiment of this thing that has acted across forever to call chaos into habitable being. You're both this divine, eternal, transcendent essence and the finite shell that you inhabit. When Jordan Peterson was hired to work at Harvard University, he actually took Timothy Leary's previous position. I had Timothy Leary's old job at Harvard, so that was kind of cool, you know, warped way. A man whose work he admires. Leary, interestingly enough, considered himself to be carrying on the work of the Satanist, Aleister Crowley. Well, I've been an admirer of Aleister Crowley. I think that uh, I'm carrying on much of the work that uh, he started uh, over 100 years ago, and I think the 60s themselves. You know, Crowley said, do what thou wilt, shall be the whole of the law. Timothy Leary was well known to be a proponent of seeking human enlightenment through the use of psychedelic drugs, such as LSD or psilocybin mushrooms. During a debate about God with Sam Harris, Peterson confirms that he believes people can experience God by taking high doses of psychedelic drugs, just as his predecessor at Harvard, Timothy Leary, believed. The landscape of mind that we, we are, that either takes great training, great luck, or pharmacological bombardment of the human brain to explore. I have never been tempted to interpret these experiences that way. Let's try a higher dose. Which further confirms that whenever Jordan Peterson is talking about God, he is in fact talking about his own consciousness. The truth is this. Jordan Peterson worships his own consciousness as God and believes that he will be transformed into a Christ by a force inside of his body called Lucifer. Peterson, like many New Age gurus, believes that if Jesus of Nazareth existed, he was not God manifest in the flesh, but a Buddha-like figure who had achieved enlightenment. Jordan Peterson is a false prophet who is teaching an antichrist doctrine, and he has deceived many. He intends to, if possible, deceive even the elect. And that's that. <laughs> i